How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another editing session video. So today we're looking at a photo that I took down in southern Utah just a few weeks ago and it's this cool photo of, I found this really neat crack or like, I don't know, channel in the ground and I thought it would make for a cool little foreground element and it leads up into this really neat little uh, butte in the background and the butte's being lit up by the setting sun. Um, there's nothing in the sky, not necessarily a crazy photo, but I thought it would make for a interesting image. So we're going to go ahead and put this together today. So we're going to jump here into Lightroom. And first off, I want to note that there's a few adjustments that I already made to this and I'll run through what I did. So if we do a little before look here, you can see I shot it pretty dark just to preserve some of those highlights up there in the corner. And I went through and I did a little mask on the foreground here. And all I did was I just raised my exposure, raised some of the whites, and just brightening up that foreground. I didn't really want to brighten up too much of the sky, just because I wanted to keep those highlights down. And I just wanted to be able to bring out some more dynamic range into my scene. So that's why I shot it pretty dark, and just so that way I can give myself a good base layer, just so I can have a good starting point for my photo. So. If you look down here at the bottom, I actually have a bunch of different versions of this image, and that's because I did a focus stack. Uh, this was fairly close to the lens, um, fairly close to the ground, and I don't know that I needed to do this many images per se, but I did anyway, just to uh, ensure that I got everything in focus. So you can see it's all, if I click on the last photo in the series, it looks exactly the same as the first photo, it's just different points of focus are in focus. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just bring this over into Photoshop. So I'm gonna click on my first image here, scroll all the way over, and then I'm gonna hold down Shift and select that entire series, come up to Photo, go to Edit In, and I'm gonna open as Layers in Photoshop. And we're gonna let the Photoshop application open up here. And this will take just a second to load all of our layers because we've got a few there. I think we've probably got about 12 to 15. So like I said, it might be kind of overkill, but sometimes with focus stacking, I like to go a little bit overkill just, just to make sure that I don't miss anything. And then while this is loading up, I kind of want to talk about what my idea is for editing this just so I have somewhat of a direction to go for. Um, I'm going to emphasize some of that light that's on the side of the butte, make it a little bit brighter, a little bit warmer. And I'm going to bring out some of the texture here on the side of this ridge and just lighten this up, kind of emphasize that little gorge as that leading line, bring out some of the texture and create a little bit of warmth down here. We're really not gonna do too much. It's not gonna be that crazy of an edit. So it's already a pretty cool looking image. And so I don't feel like there's really that much we need to do. I do wanna bring down this bright spot here just a tiny bit. Um, and we'll do that in a minute. And then we'll end the photo by doing a bit of an Orton effect and then a little bit of sharpening. So once these all load in, we'll get started on the focus stack. Okay, so we have all of our images lined up here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure my top one is selected, come all the way to the bottom, hold down shift, click that, make sure that we have all of our layers selected. And I'm going to come over to the edit tab, hit auto align layers, hit OK, make sure our projection is on auto. This just makes it so Photoshop looks at all the photos and then lines everything up so that when we actually do the uh, focus stack and we actually blend everything, everything's all actually lined up and we don't get any cr crossing lines or anything like that. And one thing to keep a note on this is the more layers you have, the longer it's going to take to process. So sometimes if you have a three or four image focus stack, it'll take 10, 15 seconds. In this case where we have I don't know, probably close to 15, 10 or 15, it, it's it's gonna take, I don't know, probably a minute or two. Okay, so we got everything all lined up there and that took a little bit longer than I was expecting, but okay, so we got everything lined up and I'm gonna make sure that we have all of our layers uh, still selected there. We're gonna come over to the edit tab again and we're going to hit auto blend layers. And we're gonna make sure that our blend method is on stack image and that's just because we are putting all of our images right on top of each other. We're not doing a panorama. So make sure you're on stack image, hit OK. And again, this will take a little bit of time to process because we have so many photos. All right, so that got our final image here. Um, one thing that I always like to do on these focus stack images is just, 
I will, first off, what we want to do, we notice that we have our marching ants down here. That means there's still a selection active. So I like to hit Command D and just unactivate that to make sure there's no active selection. And I come up here and I will delete this merged layer. Basically what happened was Photoshop looked at all of our photos and took all of our focused points of our images, compiled them into one fully in focus composite, and then it picked all these bits and pieces out of all the different photos to make that composite and then it turned it into a final merged layer. Uh, we can re-merge this, but I'm going to delete the merge layer. Everything still stays the same. Um, and I will come down here to the bottom and just make sure that my bottom section is totally in focus. Because if you notice, there's a couple little spots here at the bottom that aren't quite in focus. So what I like to do is I like to click on, usually it'll end up being this uh, top layer, uh, just the way that like, the way that I shot everything, you know, I, I shoot everything in order from the, the, the lowest point of my photo all the way up to the top. And so all of the in focus, all the points that are in focus on the bottom of my photo are going to be at the top of my layer. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I'm going to hit my brush, make sure I have that layer selected, make sure I have my color on white and I'm just going to, actually I'm going to turn up my opacity. Basically I'm just going to paint in some extra focus area on the bottom of the screen here. So. Again, opacity, flow to 100%. And come down here and just fix a couple points that Photoshop couldn't quite get. So again, there's just this little strip of unfocused area at the bottom. And sometimes Photoshop just misses it. So I'm just kind of correcting what uh, Photoshop couldn't quite get. Other than that, everything else looks to be in focus. And which I like, it looks pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, it will crop off this little uh, little sliver at the very end. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, but I'm going to, again, select all of my layers, and then I'm going to hit Command, Option, Shift, E, and that'll give us our merged layer. And then I'm going to create a duplicate of that layer just so I have a little backup. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? We are going to flatten this image. With all these layers, when we when it comes time to bring this back into Lightroom, it's going to be really heavy. So I'm going to flatten everything. Create one single background layer. Command J, do a little copy there. Okay, now we can actually start editing. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to make another copy. Turn this into my sky layer. And again, I went up here here into select. I hit sky. It selected the sky. And I'm going to come back to select. Hit select and mask. There's a hotkey for that. Um, but I'm not using that. So looks pretty good. We're gonna go to layer mask, hit OK. And expand the screen just a little bit. Okay, so we have our sky layer, we have our base layer. First thing that I want to do is just do a little little curves adjustment on that sky layer. I'm going to do a clipping mask. So I'm gonna hit option, attach that to the sky layer, and I'm just going to bring down some of these highlights just a little bit. I'm mainly trying to look at this little bright section here on the left. So nothing crazy, just bring that down just a little bit. Okay, now we're just gonna do some basic dodging and burning. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do a curves adjustment. So I'm gonna do another curves adjustment right above that base layer. I'm actually gonna title this so we can keep this straight. Uh, we'll just do four ground. Okay, we have our curves adjustment. Hold down option to create a clipping mask. And we're just gonna create a little bit of a curves adjustment here just to give it a little punch. Curves are a really great way of doing this. And if I like that, maybe right there. Let's actually delete that middle one. It's not really doing too much. I do like how that looks, but before, after, eh, it didn't really do that much. So, all right, let's just get right into dodging and burning. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to hit this little plus option. It's just going to create a new layer for us. Again, I'm going to do a clipping mask, hold down option, and turn my blend mode to overlay. We're just going to do a dodge layer. So I'm going to make sure that my brush is selected, and then we have this color set to this kind of warmer white tone. Turn my opacity back down. We'll do about 19%. Flow back down. We'll do about 19%. And let's see. We'll keep it... No, we'll do a luminosity mask. No, I don't want to do a luminosity mask. I'm not going to be very targeted with this because I'm going to hit some of this brighter stuff here on the uh, side of that mesa. So I'm going to zoom in, make sure my brush is selected, and 
just kind of start painting in some of that area. Again, I'm really targeting some of these spots where the sun is hitting. Uh, we do a little before and after, so you can see that. Just brightening that up just ever so slightly. And I'm not being super careful with this just because we have this selected only to the ground so it's not affecting anything in the sky. And that's the point of doing that sky layer. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. A little before, after. Uh, I'm going to expand this and just brighten up some of this spot, area, some of this area down here on the, uh, the ground. Again, not being real picky with this, just kind of doing a general brightening of some of these spots down here. So we'll do a full before, after, before, and after. I do like that. Okay. Now, I think what I want to do is, this already looks pretty good as it is, actually. <laughs> uh, we're going to do another dodge layer. We're going to be a little bit more targeted on this one. Again, do another clippy mask. We're going to come down to overlay. I'm going to hit that. Luminosity mask, again, this is just the TK luminosity mask function or plugin. This is this is the one that I use. It's free on Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, I'm going to do a Midtones 3. Yep, I like that one. So Midtones 3, and we're going to zoom in here, and I'm just going to hit some of the... I'm basically just trying to highlight or like emphasize uh, some of the points on this little ridge right here. And we have the sun coming in from the left side. So there is some ambient light that's, that should be lighting up some of this area. So we're just being ever so slightly lighting, lightning, lightning, lighting up some of this area down here. We hit some of these ridges up at the top. Uh, maybe come back to some parts on the mesa. Um, we'll target these bushes here in a in a little bit. Um, we'll do a darker luminosity mask just to specifically target them. But, oop, right here. Some of these cracks. Just trying to do whatever I can to bring out some of that texture in the ground without doing, this is kind of how I do this without doing a, uh, like a clarity um, slider or anything like that. I'm not a big fan of the clarity slider. I think it's destructive to your photos. In some cases, it, it can be useful in some cases, um, but like a global clarity slider, uh, using the clarity slider as a global feature is destructive, I think. Um, okay, let's zoom out. It's not bad. Let's do it before and after. We may have gone a little too bright right there, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a bit. Um, let's see. I do like how this is looking. Let's do another uh, little bit dodge layer and this time we will do maybe a mid-tones um now let's do another mid-tones three and we probably could just do this on that previous layer but I don't know. we'll just come back and we'll just do this as a second one I'm just gonna brighten up some of these bushes so don't want to do anything too crazy uh, maybe hit some of these rocks as well Ooh, a little too much there actually um, let's do the eraser and I'm going to hit just, I'm just hitting the ground, um, behind the bush. I don't want, I don't want it to look like there's like a mask that that's around the bush. I don't want there to be like some white halo. So I'm just trying to delete some of that. So even if it, um, isn't necessarily there, I'm trying to avoid the perception of it being there. Uh, let's see, let's go back to the brush. Come down here. I want to hit a couple of these little random rocks. Just kind of emphasize those just ever so slightly. Some of the spots here on the ground, in the little ditch here. And why is this? Oh, my blend mode's on normal. I need to put my blend mode on overlay. That's why it looks weird. I was like, why is this so strong? That makes more sense. Uh, I'm going to hit this rock a little bit. I don't want that to be a focus point, so I'm not going to go crazy on that. And just hitting some of these little ridges in here, just being a little bit selective of what I'm picking out as far as what I want to be highlighted. Um, again, hit this ridge. And some of these points up here, some of these ridges. I do 
like that. Yeah. Okay. I th oh no, don't do that. Uh, maybe some of these. Okay, that's getting there. I think this bottom section might be a little too bright, but we'll deal with that in just a second. So, um, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into camera raw filter. Um, but first I'm going to select my foreground, come up here and I'm going to select everything on my layers. I'm gonna hit Command, Option, Shift, E, create one merge layer of everything and bring this into camera raw. So I'm gonna hit filter, camera raw filter. This is just Lightroom within Photoshop. So super good tool to use. Um, I'm going to do the first thing I'm going to do is do a little mask. I'm going to do a radio mask and I'm going to do this right here in the middle and we're just going to boost the whites, the whites just a little bit. Uh, bring down the highlights. Um, yeah, I think that's actually pretty good right there. Add a little contrast. We're going to do a uh, another little radio gradient, somewhat of a vignette. Uh, make sure it's inverted. And pull the feather down. Um, and then I'm going to actually subtract the sky out of this one because I only want this one to affect the foreground. Okay. And I'm going to just boost the contrast. Just like that. I don't really want to do too much with like dropping the exposure or anything because I still want to keep some of that brighter points. But yeah. We gotta be careful because we're getting close to this looking over edited. Um, and some spots, and I think we need to darken down. Well, no, I think we're I think we're fine actually. We got to be careful though, because we don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to create another radial gradient. I love radial gradients, by the way. The radial gradients are my favorite um, little mask to use. I'm going to bring this right up here on the butte, and I'm going to make sure my feather is all the way up. And I'm going to come in here, raise the blacks, and then I'm going to raise the temperature just like that. I do like that a lot. We'll do a little before and after. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll do, I know I said I don't like doing um, the uh, clarity stuff. But we're going to do a tiny smidge of clarity. I'm going to create a longer radial gradient here. Rotate it around. Bring it down right into the middle of this little gorge here. And I'm going to just boost the clarity just a tiny bit. Just don't do this a lot because you don't want to have it look like that because that's bad. That looks really gross. Um, but we're going to just do just a tiny bit. Probably right there, I think. Just boosting that like 10. Do a little before, after. It's not adding much, just a little extra punch. Um, I do like that actually. I do like that a lot. So before, after, before, after. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do another little um, vignette gradient. And this is just something that I, this is something that I do. I just do a lot of gradients over and over again, and I probably don't need to, but whatever. Uh, we're gonna pull the sky out again. I don't really want to do anything else with the sky. I like how the sky looks as is. Um. Then let's bring down the highlights. Um, yeah, we can bring that down, I guess. Yeah. I'm actually going to bring... No, the amount's good. We don't want to mess the amount. Um, where did my feather go? Oh, I need to select the radial gradient. Okay, feather. Um, I think that's probably fine right there. Okay, I think that's about good. I am gonna do one more. Um, actually, let's come down here to our tone curve. I'll create one point here at the bottom. And why isn't it doing, oh, we're not on, there we go. Okay, tone curve, come down here to the bottom. I'm really just gonna make an anchor point. I'm really not gonna pull that darker end any further down. Um, do one up here at the beginning, or at the, the, the higher point, and then I'm going to create a mid-tone point. And I'm just going to boost that mid-tone just ever so slightly. OK. 
Okay. Um, let's play with our color a little bit. I do like how the colors are looking already. But let's see what we can do with this. Let's bring the blues down just a tiny bit. Um, I really want to boost some of that orange saturation. So I don't know what this is going to look like, but let's see here. Boost the luminance. Uh, our yellows. Yellows don't really do much. This is going to be probably more of our purples and magentas. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the oranges. We just need to crank the luminance on that. Or maybe what we should do. No, I do like that actually. I don't want to mess with that too much. Come down here. Uh, pull that luminance back a little bit. Um, I don't know. I think that's fine. I'm going to come back to the curves. I am going to bring up the blacks just ever so slightly. Probably to about 4 or 5. And... Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, We're going to do another little radio gradient here. Um, just right here in the middle. Bring up that feather just so it's not hitting anything really hard. Come down to our curve. Anchor point. Anchor point. And I'm just going to play with this a little bit to see what we can get out of it. Okay, that's not bad. Bring down these highlights again. Bring down the whites. Um, maybe the shadows. Yeah, not bad. Okay, we'll do a little before and after, before and after. Okay, we hit OK. Bring ourselves back into the main Photoshop Photoshop section. Uh, I'm going to hit Command-J on that layer, just create a duplicate. And I think this is looking pretty good, so I'm going to create a Orton effect. Uh, we're going to go to Filter. I'm going to hit Blur, Gaussian Blur. Make sure my radius is sent to 24.7. That's just what I do because that's um, applicable to the camera that I'm using. And that's the Canon uh, R6 Mark II which has a 24 megapixel sensor, not the biggest, but it works. So we're going to hit OK, and then I'm going to come over to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. I'm going to crank the contrast to 100. Uh, I'm going to boost the brightness a little bit. Hit OK, come back to Image, and then I'm going to come down to Color Balance, add a little bit of warmth to this. So just on my midtones, adding a little bit of yellow, maybe a tiny, I usually go to negative 10, and then I'll add a little bit of magenta, probably about four or five or six. Um, highlights, I'll bring the yellows up to about 10 as well. And I usually leave it about there. And then I'll come over to my TK Luminosity Mask function. And I'll do a lights one. And then we will come down to our blend mode, hit soft light, and then bring the opacity. I usually do about 40. Some people do more, some people do less. Uh, the way that I do this, I like to, or the way that I do the Orton effect. Um, I like to keep it around 40. Um, some people do it a little bit stronger. Some people do it a lot lighter. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I do a pretty subtle Orton effect. So, okay, and I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I do something feels a little off about it. So we're going to bring it back into Lightroom. I'm going to hit Command W. We're going to hit Save. This is just going to pop it right back into Lightroom. Okay, so there we have our image there. I am going to do another radial gradient, and I'm going to bring it up here to this butte. Uh, make sure my feather is pushed in. And I want to bring down, I have the uh, temperature already up a little bit. I'm going to boost the whites just ever so slightly. Uh, maybe the shadows, no. Highlights, no, I'm not going to go crazy on those. Yeah, just boosting that that white point. Okay, I do like that. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm feeling about this. I think it's good. I think we've got something here that's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna play with the tone curve just ever so slightly. I might actually just bring up the overall exposure just ever so slightly. Maybe bring back the highlights just a little bit. Just a little little global adjustment. Um, I'm going to do a linear gradient to 
about right here. Wow, that warmed it up. I actually don't mind that, actually. Um, I don't know if I want it to be that warm, but I don't mind it being a little bit warmer, like right there. That's not bad. I'm going to boost the contrast a little bit. Yeah, that's not bad. It's kind of an accident, but looks all right. Um, for after, just brightening up just a little bit. Um, anchor point, I'm just going to do this little thing with the tone curve. Um, don't know if I like that, actually. I am going to bring the blacks up just ever so slightly, maybe one to two. Uh, maybe bring down that shadow point. That's not bad. Okay, I think that might do it. So I'm just going to do a quick little sharpening here. Uh, I'm going to jack this up to probably about 50, 60. Um, and then we'll be a little more selective here with our masking. I'm just holding an option, hitting masking, and then I'm sliding this just so I can select what I want to be sharpened. Um, I usually do around this point right here. I don't want to have everything, as you can see, like even the noise in the sky is being sharpened. We don't want that. So I, I usually at least do it so that I get everything out of the sky. Make sure nothing in the sky is selected. So I'll probably go about right there, and I will pull, I think for this one, the radius up. I'll pull the detail down. Um, do a little for after before and after on that. I like that. I think that's pretty good. So I think that'll be it for this photo. So let me know what your thoughts on this. Let me know if you have any thoughts on the editing process and if there's anything that you would have done differently. Uh, this is just how I would have edited this Im image. And I I like how this turns out. Um, I, I think it's kind of cool that the sky ended up being really dark, which I think is neat. Um, this was like right as the sun was just about to be totally gone. So that's really just like ambient light on the hill there. And I think it makes for kind of a cool photo. So I'm going to go back to this spot at some point and try to get it with, you know, either some kind of stars, maybe with a better sunset condition or, um, I mean, meaning like, you know, clouds in the sky or anything like that. So we will definitely be trying this one again. Um, I'd like to get a few variations of it because I, I think this, this little spot here has a lot of potential and I, I think it's really neat. So, um, I actually, no, I think it's fine. There's part of me that's still like, yes, there's some spots that are a little maybe too pink, but I actually think it's all right. So it's just kind of a blue and purpley kind of photo. So it's just kind of the nature of it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and make sure to come back next Sunday for another editing session. So we do these every Sunday and they're a lot of fun. Let me know if there's anything you would like to see specifically out of one of these. And yeah, we'll just keep, we'll keep doing them. But in the meantime, hope you have a good one and we'll see you next time. Bye.